So Chase, where do you stand on the crypto environmental mining debate? Bill Gates, Elon Musk have concerns, but when you talk to folks deep in the industry, they say that's a red herring. I think that's right. I, you know, cr crypto mining can actually be used uh, as, as a huge benefit to promote uh, very beneficial infrastructure and capture otherwise wasted energy resources like natural gas that gets flared in the oil field. Um, it's also, you know, very useful to uh, unlock value in otherwise stranded renewable energy resources um, that are generating power capacity that, that doesn't have a home to actually be consumed. Um, so when you look at the actual global footprint of uh, Bitcoin mining energy consumption, uh, it's shocking. It's shockingly driven uh, by, by a lot of these wasted energy resources. And we, when we say mining, we really mean a bunch of engineers and computers uh, running very complex math problems, trying to solve those problems to mine, mine that cryptocurrency. Talk to us about what Crusoe is in fact doing. How are you using some of this excess energy to power these mining operations? Sure. So Crusoe has a solution called digital flare mitigation. And what it does is we, uh, you know, in the oil industry, um, there's, this some, there's something that happens called flaring. And flaring persists when oil companies drill oil wells um, and natural gas is an associated byproduct of that oil production. And when they don't have the physical infrastructure to transport that gas to a downstream market where it can actually be consumed, um, they're sort of stuck in this situation where the best, most economic uh, and most efficient thing to do with it is to just light it on fire. Um, and this actually creates a massive emissions footprint um, and, and, a, and a massive waste of an otherwise you know, useful uh, energy resource. So Crusoe's solved that problem uh, by basically co-locating uh, data centers on site with the oil production and now instead of the gas being flared, we're able to uh, uh, utilize it to generate power and then utilize that power to power data centers that we use for very energy intensive computing applications like Bitcoin mining, uh, training large scale artificial intelligence algorithms and uh, you know, generating, uh, you know, rendering for, for, for uh, graphics and animation development. I'm curious what the conversation was like when you asked oil operators and ranchers and farmers if you could move servers onto their property to mine Bitcoin, which um, some people might not even know what Bitcoin is. Sure, it was uh, it was definitely a a, a leap um, for them, but you know they they I think for the, as a whole the industry has been very very receptive to the idea, uh, largely because you know they see it as a solution to flaring. Uh, you know, I think, I think the response early on from a number of operators was, you know, I don't really care what you're doing with the gas so long as you're sort of making my flare go away. Um, that's a huge environmental win for me. Um, and it's a huge benefit to my overall production process. So talk to us about how big your operations are. Uh, we mentioned Montana, North Dakota, you're expanding in Texas. That's correct. Um, so currently we've deployed about 45 systems, um, primarily in North Dakota and Montana. Um, we're expanding, uh, so that area is called the Bakken. Um, it's one of the largest oil basins here domestically in the United States. Um, and we're planning to expand down into the Permian Basin, which is in West Texas um, later this year. Uh, you know, the team's about 75 people that's, that's sort of geographically dispersed between uh, Denver, San Francisco, uh, and a big field operations staff in, in North Dakota uh, to support our on-site operations. And uh, you know that, that's kind of where we're at today. We just closed a, a Series B round of funding, which was led by Valor Equity Partners. And uh, you know, we had great participation from other uh, climate tech investor groups like uh, Lower Carbon Capital as well. And also some you know, crypto-focused folks like Coinbase, the Winklevoss twins. You know, yep. we've seen this big crackdown from China on mining. We're seeing regulatory action being taken in the UK. We're waiting for regulators to take a stand on cryptocurrency here in the United States. What have your conversations with regulators been like? Uh, uh, generally speaking, I think very positive. Uh, I think I think uh, the regulatory climate here in the United States has been, you know, very thoughtful um, around uh, both Bitcoin mining and around flaring. I think, you know, when you look at a state like North Dakota, uh, they're, they're sort of, you know, uh, between a rock and a hard place where, you know, 45% of the state's revenue is generated from the oil industry um, and, and flaring is a big problem and they want to do the right thing. Uh, but if they over-regulate it, you know, they, they kind of outlaw the industry and coming up with, you know, coming to table with, coming to the table with an innovative solution like digital flare mitigation 
uh, that can actually create economic value while also reducing the environmental footprint of, of the oil industry um, has been very, very well received in markets like that. Um, as far as the China and with ban China goes- China cracking down- I, Sure. Well, I guess my question is where, where do you think mining is gonna sp spread next? If it's not gonna happen in China, is that a huge boon to the United States or elsewhere? Absolutely. I think it's a great thing for the industry as a whole. I think it's a great thing for the Bitcoin network. Uh, one of the big criticisms has always been that uh, the mining process is highly concentrated in China. Um, there's a lot of you know, obscurity and uh, opaqueness to that. And with the ban in China, you're seeing that hash rate get distributed around the globe. Um, and you're seeing a, a more, you know, you're seeing the benefits of decentralization. Uh, the network is still continuing to operate and you're, you know, you're seeing a massive influx of hash rate to areas like uh, North America. Um, Central Asia is, is, is a big beneficiary of this as well. Um, and you know, I think it presents a, a great opportunity to build a whole new industry domestically here in, in North America.